Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Mayo's Movie Talk with myself, Joe Mayo, and also Tom Hanyadi, where we're here for another show, which we try to do once a week, usually Wednesdays, if we can. And we just uh, talk about movies and television and, you know, get some comments from right. new people, talk about things we may have watched lately or picked up, movies we might have picked up. And we already got a few people here, like Patrick and uh back bacon and beer back bacon beer yeah. yeah and uh so here we go let's start up so maybe All we'll right. wait a, a little bit because i mean let a little more yeah. people get here before we start you know talking about stuff or showing stuff uh i have a good thing hello henry um you, you might know you probably notice i guess you look to try that i you know I'll, I'll, you know allow you to come up here i just want you to know how do I say this? On certain other sites, it's been it's I, I've been informed that's not me. Just so you know, a guy that has a dialogue with you is not me. Okay, just mm. so don't please just don't think it's me in the future. It's not. Okay, that's all I want to say. All right, uh, Rome loves Dan. Hello, Rome. Hey, we got Joe Sofmantaneo again. Who nice. who are you? Though? Who is is Rome? Is he Rome or is he Dan? Rome loves Dan. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. And then we got Matchstick Man and Charles and Glenn. What? Glenn, what's going on? Yeah. So I guess yeah. I'll start out with my boring topic. Yeah. That I've been talking about going to the theater. Yesterday, last night, to see... This was number four, right? The yes, fourth the fourth time, time I've seen Ben-Hur yeah. in a movie theater. Uh, the best mm -hmm. time was the first time, which is about 2009, I think, at the Ziegfeld Theater in New York City at the time, back in 2009, which is one of the still standing big movie palaces, mm -hmm. you know, really old-fashioned architecture, and the, the screen was the hugest, most huge screen I've ever seen. Uh, the screen at this place I went to, you know, not as large, but still, right. it's great. And, I, and then I saw in 2019, I think it was, I saw Ben Hart twice at Fathom Events in, mm. a, in a regular movie theater. And then I saw it at an independent theater last night. Uh, i still getting over a, a, a cold, so just so you know that. And uh, But I went to the movie theater with a cold, and it was funny because... Well, I spent the whole three-hour and 40-minute movie, because it's a long movie with an intermission, right. stifling coughs. And I know the movie by heart, so I was able to save the coughing for when there was music, loud, bombastic music, or right. chariot race, or something. I was letting it out. And let me <laughs> tell you, there were some quiet parts where it's really intimate, yeah. love scenes, very nice soft music. Da -da 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 -da. I'm sure you probably couldn't wait for that in, in, that uh, intermission music oh, to start. Forget it. <laughs> you know. So anyway, um, but I, but it wasn't. A, you know, it could have been worse. It was get, it's getting better, uh, and that's how that goes. Um, all right. So, uh, it's the blood vessel. Uh, I don't know what that is. Please tell me, and I will. Uh, I will check that out. Uh, was it a packed theater? No, it was not packed. Um, I would say half full. It wasn't bad, but it was a very bad, bad, bad rainy day and night, and it's bad today. It's like monsoon weather out there, violent winds. I don't. I think maybe that kept a lot of people away as well. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's funny because I mean, and sometimes I couldn't help it. Sometimes there was parts in there. I just had to do it, you know. I had to let it out. <clears throat> ticket price is your coffin now. <laughs> ticket price is thirteen dollars a ticket, which is I thought it was okay. seventeen. It's not. It was thirteen dollars each. So gotcha. that's fine. I don't care. Not Something too like bad. that. I pay twenty five. You know. I don't. Care. I don't care. You know. I would love to see it in the. I would love to go see that in the theater. Um. All right, Joe's coughing. He's back now. And <laughs> yeah, not yeah. as much as I was. Yeah, um, and uh, Pulp Fiction is going to be at this theater. It's going to be. It's going to be in the. So again. do they run? Do they show new new run films too, or is it all? Yes. Um, you know, okay. Yeah, but they yeah. usually show. I think more offbeat 
ones, like okay, more like artsy right. things, you know, independent. It's a, yeah, the in, independent stuff. Yeah, they're gonna show this thing, which I was hoping somebody would. They're gonna show that in June, so I hope to right. see this thing. I haven't seen this thing on a big screen since I was fifteen, <laughs> and I didn't understand, I didn't follow it very well then, but now I I do. Uh, yeah, well, it's not extra large. I mean, it, you know. Good, good size, but not not as big as back in '59. <laughs> well, we say film quality; it's probably off of the disc. I mean, it's, it's quality's good, but it, well, you it's know. probably yeah the latest restoration. You know, it's yeah, they don't the show; they really version. don't show films mm. anymore. You know, thirty-five millimeter or anything mm. anymore. Um, yeah, well, I definitely think that's going to happen, Henry. I definitely think. You can you can bet on that. They've shown Jaws. I've seen it a lot of times. Not even on an anniversary. They have it in the theater. That'll definitely be in the theater next year. There's no way. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, hello, Beetle Bites. Uh, yeah. So you didn't. I heard you say that uh, this morning that you you didn't uh, you hadn't seen uh, Gladiator. Um, no, I haven't. Russell so, Crowe. Yeah. Right now. Right, yeah, Russell Crowe, uh, River Phoenix. Is it good? Uh, not River Phoenix, Joaquin Phoenix. No, listen, it th- th- that movie won Best Picture as well. Um, oh, it did? I didn't so, know that. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I, I'd be willing to try that one. I think you it. would like, listen, yeah, you know, you did talk about CGI and stuff like that, but they only did it for, like, uh, you know, the larger shots you know if they're if they show landscape if they show coliseums then they did do yeah, some yeah. cgi stuff you know well, even but, ben her i mean they have the arena yeah. big arena right where the chariot yeah. race is staged and mm-hmm. you know when you see the making of and things you can see like around the coliseum or whatever this because he car right. like a parking lot and the distance of buildings yeah. uh, uh, you know so they put matte paintings up Right, which look right. which look great on a big screen. I mean, you can t- you know, you can't tell. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Gladiator is very good. Yeah, so- yeah. So the so this, they are working on a sequel. I mean, it's filming now. Denzel Washington is going to be in uh, this this new one. This new a Gladiator sequel. sequel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I so get- um. Yeah. Okay. So I think you I think you would like um I think you would like Gladiator very much. I mean if um you know Yeah, I might try, yeah, love yeah the... I might try it. Yeah. Uh hello, hello uh, Nick. Uh yeah, this is supposed to well Nick movies and TV. Do I slip into the Beatles? Well, rarely. I mean I did a <clears throat> a video of I wanna hold your hand review. Um, which, by the way, is also going to be here. I want to hold your hand. Mm-hmm. It's going to be playing here. And it's another one. I don't know if I'll make the trip for that. And they got actually Dawn of the Dead and then Day of the Dead. Mm. Which nobody wants to see those with, with me. But, uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, Do you have, you, have you seen Spartacus? Yeah. A long time ago. Okay. That's when I was watching. Yeah. Uh, help me out here. Throw in a blank. Sword and, Sa- so, Sword and Sandal? No. His, come on. Uh-huh. <laughs> Kubrick. Kubrick, Kubrick yeah. yeah, well, yeah, yeah, Kubrick. yeah, draw a blank there. Yeah, that's when I was doing that. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. I was good. I, it's been a long time, very long time. Um, I just want to try to catch everything because, yeah, it's actually, he has a look, he has the look for that kind of movie, I think. Yeah, uh, second, the second Joker film is just was just announced that it's coming out in October. And the uh, the first trailer will be coming out on April 9th. So looking forward to seeing that. Showtime Spartacus series. I was a huge fan of the Sword and Sandal films of the 80s. You know, I, like I love Beastmaster. I love Sword and, Sword and Sorcerer. I love, uh, you know, Conan, obviously. You know, I loved, I ate all that stuff up in the 80s. I mean, there's all kinds of ones. I mean, not the old ones that I watched. Mm-hmm. The Robe. Then there's a sequel to the robe yeah. called Demetrius and the Gladiators, which I really like. Yeah. Um, I like that better than the robe, actually. And you know, Samson and Delilah, the Ten Commandments, uh, those kind of movies. Uh. Uh, no, I ended up not seeing Napoleon. I don't know if I have any interest in seeing Napoleon now, just because I heard that it's just a a big mess of a film. But I bet it looks great. 
Like Danny, Danny, you got a time to you got you got the time to cause chaos and commotion in the, uh, elsewhere, not here. Uh, um, now this is really so far. I haven't heard anything about this, and that's a, that's a crime if they don't put a hard day's night in the theaters. You know they should, and I haven't heard anything. But I did see it last year at this theater. Mm. They they played it last year for whatever reason, mm. and I've seen that. I've seen a hard day's night in the movie theater. At least yeah. a half a dozen times since like the the eighties. Mm. I've seen it a lot of times. Uh, uh, so I've got lines from airplane here. All right, well, let's take a moment here now, folks. If you're gonna like ask questions and and comment and stuff, if you can hold off a little bit because we don't want to back up too much while we we yeah. talk a little bit about maybe movies we've seen. This week or something, right. starting with Tom. Tom, yeah. have you seen anything? Yeah, I know what. There's at least yeah. one I know. Of. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I did watch two two Blu-rays, and I went to go see. Uh, I saw two two films at the theater. Um, I did watch. Uh, it had been many years since I have seen the Ten Commandments, and I did show that I think last week that I picked it up, and I watched it on Easter Sunday, and um, you know it, it, it was really beautiful. On, on on blu-ray the, the the colors really popped out and you know the one thing i i, I have always remembered that i still find silly to this day is that you know you see you know charlton heston's character do all of these things that uh, edward g robinson you know uh, sees he witnesses and he, he still and he still does not <laughs> you know even the parting of the sea was not enough for edward g robinson yeah yeah, say, Moses. Hey, yeah, 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 Moses. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it still wasn't enough for him to be convinced uh, that maybe they shouldn't, uh, maybe they shouldn't be hanging around the uh, the pharaohs. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but you know, I've always been a Ann Baxter fan, so um, I, you know, I love her performance in there. And then you know, what can you say about Yul Brenner? He's 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 great too, but um, but it it was really it was a lot of fun revisiting that film. You missed somebody. Make sure that it's. I think you missed somebody. It's, I said I said Charlton Heston. Oh, you did. Oh, <laughs> I saw that. Well, first of all, yeah. my mother took me to see that in New York City, in mm. seven, in like nineteen seventy or something. Yeah, I saw it on a big screen in, in in New York City, and I saw it in twenty sixteen. They had it at Fathom Events. They okay. had it, a 60th yeah. anniversary. Um, yeah. Yeah. So and then there was another movie. The next, you... Yeah, the next movie, the next movie I watched on Blu-ray was, uh, I meant to watch this during my Christmas, my, cu- my couple days off during Christmas, but I didn't. Um, and I, now it's a, it's a Wonderful Life. Oh, um, okay. and, it, and it had been about 15 years since I watched a Wonderful, It's a Wonderful Life. So uh, maybe even longer. Um, so it's still, it, the movie still made me tear up. Um, I, I, you know, Jimmy Stewart is just fantastic in the, in the movie. If you guys hadn't seen it, um, and I'm thinking it's Lionel it's Barry, one of the Mer- Barrymore brothers was, uh, the, you know, the, yeah. the, know the asshole. Barrymore, yeah. I yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Um, but you know, and then Lionel he, you know, Barrymore. gets that 8,000, yeah, yeah $8,000 because the, um, the uncle misplaces it the and, snake. um, you know, yeah. And instead of, you know. You know, being someone with a heart, you know, Jimmy Stewart's talking to him right there at the end of the movie, um, or, you know, towards the end of the movie. And, he, you know, he has a good chance to hear be, you know, come out and be a hero. But, but you know, he's still he's still a prick in the film. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Potter. Lionel um, yeah. And I tell you, I mean, that movie, I remember the first time I watched it, I was, I was living with my dad at the time and my dad was in his room and I'm outside. I mean, I'm in the living room watching it and I'm crying 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 and i'm constantly looking over my shoulder making sure my dad cuz doesn't come out of the bedroom and 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 see me cry you know like a little baby watching this film but yeah but it still made me tear up watching it for the second time and um you know you know obviously gloria graham who i love uh, has a bit part in that film and i you know i just love her in that little role that she's got um then I saw two films in the theater. The first one I, I really hope uh, Joe will go see, and some of you guys will go see too. And it's called Late Night with the Devil. And it's a really, you know, it's a smaller film, more smaller independent film. And uh, it takes place during a talk show. It takes place during the 70s. It's a fictional character, but he's he he's 
doing this talk show in the time of Johnny Carson. So he's like trying to compete with Johnny Carson and you know, the ratings are starting to dip. So he decides for the Halloween episode to have, you know, certain like mediums and, and psychics and uh, people like that. And then he also has a psychiatrist who's working with a woman, a little child who's possessed by a demon. And, um, you know, and things go on that you would expect them that would go on in a uh, situation like that. So I don't want to give up, give too much away. But I really, really enjoy Late Night with the Devil. And it's not that it's scary, but it's suspenseful. And uh, I had a great time with it. And I think Joe will have a good time seeing Late Night with the Devil. And I so think all you guys movie? can have it. Yeah, it's a brand new movie. Yeah, brand new movie. Just uh, came out last week. Mm. And, uh, yeah, Mr. Blood Vessel says he can't wait to see it either. So I definitely uh, recommend it. So it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a possession film just set during a uh, late night talk show. <laughs> You know, um, I had enough about like I said, possession, though. Yeah. We have to see him exorcist yeah. believer. I'm like, I well, I'm yeah, I know. Yeah, but unfortunately, it's it's got nothing to do with the uh, you know the original Exorcist film. No, I know. Um, yeah. Um, now, other movie I saw another smaller film called Love Lies Bleeding, um, which is a um, <laughs> uh, needless to say, a uh, same sex relationship film between two women, um, or one being Kristen Stewart. Uh, Ed Harris is in the film, and I got to tell you, Ed Harris is one of the most intense actors to date. I, you know, and the stuff that he's in, he just gives such great intense performances, and then he didn't let let down in this performance either. It's a smaller role. Uh, he plays Kristen Stewart's dad in this in this, who obviously uh, you know gets into trouble and and stuff like that. He's just not a good guy. So it's Kristen Stewart's, you know. She, uh, you disgust me. Oh, yeah, what's that's that good. all about? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he doesn't like me. I don't know. Um, maybe I saw a film that uh, he didn't like. But anyways, but Love Lies Bleeding, that was another fun one, too. And, uh, you know, if you got an open mind, I say go check that out. So there's okay. that. Okay. Uh, let's see now. Um, the answer is no. I, I don't have any uh, desire to see that. I've said this before because... Uh, much as I like Godzilla and stuff, I don't like the Americanized Godzillas. I like the Japanese Godzillas. Mm. So, I mean, I still have to see the other one, the first one. And I got that on a used Blu-ray, which along with like 300 other Blu-rays, maybe I'll get to one day. So I might wind up seeing the first one, Godzilla vs. Kong. Yeah, you know, that uh, that new one, it was, it was, um, it was not programmed, but uh, it was expected to do... Um, fifty-five to sixty million dollars. It ended up blowing it, blowing that, uh, blowing that apart by doing eighty-eight million dollars over the weekend. So a lot of people went to go see. Um, and I and I say I would say it was probably on the heels of Godzilla minus one. Um, I, so I, I'm sure that didn't help the box office, but um, that Godzilla X Kong did very well at the box office. Good. I'm glad to hear this. Um, yeah, the 50th anniversary of the Exorcist did have uh, the spider crawling sequence. Oh, so it was the extended, it was the extended cut then, yeah, or director's it, it cut. Was in there. Yeah, ah, that's a great speech. Oh, that's a great speech. I love that scene. Ooh, ah, I love it. Uh, there he is at the end. He's not surviving, right? Yeah. The first time I saw the movie, you know, yes. I, didn't see, I didn't see it for many years. It's a Wonderful Life. I never caught it, even though it's a yeah. public domain. And when I caught it, I cried because it was so, like, disappointing the first time. Only because I expected this amazing Christmas movie. And, and right. I had my sights set on a Christmas movie. And it was Christmas season near the end. But anyway, but then I saw it later with the, you know, not a, for what it was. And I liked it a lot the second time. Yeah. So, so I'm glad. Well, I mean... I and are you talking about like Christmas in a way of like a Christmas story or something like that? Because well, I mean, listen, it is about you know giving, you yeah, know. I so mean, I mean, Christmas like, trappings, the snow. Okay, I you got know, you. All that okay. kind of stuff. You yes. Know, um, yes. But yes. It was mostly yes, about Henry. you know his, his uncle and screwing up the money and all. I mean, right. You know, yeah. yeah, I know there's a message and all that, but I didn't think it was. Anyway, the same thing with White Christmas, which uh, you know I can't stand. That it's movie. not a Christmas. Yeah. You know. Um, Yes, so what Henry, you say is not a Christmas movie, White Christmas. What do you mean? No, I'm doing like you just did. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, um, yes, Henry, I'm looking forward to seeing Alto Nights. I think that got delayed to March of next year now. 
Uh, that's with Robert De Niro playing uh, playing two gangsters. He's playing two roles in that film. Uh, so looking forward, yeah. I'm just getting warmed up. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great, <laughs> great movie and a great scene. Yeah, yeah. I'm here. I'm I, hearing that the, the new Omen is really good. I'm hearing. I wasn't going to see that either, but then I, I, you know, people are saying it's really good. Yeah. So, um, Tom, is that it for your watches? Yeah, I mean that's it for uh, for that. And then tonight, after after we are done doing this, I am getting back. Yeah. To uh, the Odd here. Couple. Yes. Yes. Did I like Bride of the Monster? Well, yeah, Bride of the Monster is an Ed Wood movie. It's another terrible movie from Ed Wood, but it's so incompetent and funny. It, it, it's like a lot of Ed Wood movies. It's worth seeing just for how inept it is. You know, it's not boring. It's silly and stupid. And it's got the Lugosi's almost his last role in there. At least he tries to give it his all. Bella Lugosi. Yeah. Uh, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. There's so much shit. It's, uh, it's getting, getting like not able to keep up with this for some reason. Uh, it's good. I'm, I'm hope I'm glad people are engaged and uh, hello I was everybody. Curious if any, yeah, if anybody watched last week at the end, I told them to watch something, um, you know, out of their wheelhouse or or something, uh, you know, obscure or just something different. And I was curious if anybody did. Um, but if not, you know, that's no big deal. You do it when you're ready. You know. Um, uh, we'll go. That doesn't really technically it's Lugosi's last movie, but that's footage that's home movie footage that was shot that was utilized in the movie after he died. You know what I mean? It's like it wasn't like he made movies after that home movie footage, if you know what I mean. It's it's technically his last movie because it was released after he died and they put the home movie footage in there. But it's not the last movie he actually filmed. The last one would be The Black Sleep. Which I love. Mm. Anyway, I'm going to talk about some movies I watched, and there aren't many of them. Um, I think I talked about this last time. I, I, I'm on my Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes, Basil Rathbone kick. I yeah. think I talked about this last time. It's the first one. Hound of the Baskervilles, which I watched. I forget if I talked about it, but I did a, a video on it. Really good. First one takes place in the Victorian times, the way Sir Arthur Conan Doyle attended it. The second movie... Both of these are by 20th Century Fox. Is The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. And uh, this stars Ida Lupino, who is really... I think she's pretty. <laughs> and I know she's in other movies I've seen her in. They Drive by Night. I remember seeing that. Um, but I did a lot of research on her. And she had polio as a teenager. Mm -hmm. And had it her whole life. And she be I didn't know she was one, like the first woman director. Or I think... Was she the first woman director? Or... A major mm. woman director, a female director. And even though she had polio, I mean, it never affected her walking. You well, know, what she... year was that? What year this was is that one? 1939. Okay, because I think I want to say Ida Lupino, Lupino was also directing films at that point in time. I don't well. know if it was that early. Yeah. I don't know when she started. Yeah. yeah. But she's got quite a, a career. And, you know, this, this is very, both of these are very good. The first two. 20, the first two, 20th Century Fox, both of them take place in Victorian times. And you'll notice in this one, Basil Rathbone's wearing, I think they call it the, the Deer Stalker cap, the classic cap. I'm mentioning that for a reason. I also watched, now we go into the box sets. Hmm. And I watched the first one, after those two, it moved on to Universal Studios, 1942. Hmm. First one, is called Sherlock Holmes and the Voice of Terror. And what that is, is terrorism. It's the Nazis. <laughs> and, mm. you know, it's quite a jolt. It's a very dark film. If Tim Allen were here, I would say it's very film noirish. Sherlock Holmes and the Voice of Terror, a lot, a really gr a creepy in a lot of ways. Totally mm. different feel because it's not Fox and it's not taking place in Victorian classic times. Now it's in modern era. 1940s. Mm. A little weird to see it. I mean, he has a different hairstyle and stuff. And I, and the region I mentioned, the, the classic Cap, there's a comedy scene in Voice of Terror where Watson, Dr. Watson goes out with Holmes and he grabs, Holmes goes to grab his old hat. And yeah. he says, Holmes, you promised. 
And they oh, he leaves it there, and instead he takes one of these <laughs> from the forties. That's like yeah. a little joke, you know. And it was really intense. I was very surprised. Um, and it, I have seen these all, but not for like twenty years or something. Is that, like that. a uh, public domain set? No, no, MPI. And the thing is, it's MPI. You know, these are on Blu-ray, but I think they're out of print. Okay. This is not Blu-ray. These are DVDs. But as I'm watching it, it's restored by UCLA, and yeah. they look really good. I mean, I was amazed how good Sherlock Holmes and the Voice of Terror looked. And right. I'm thinking, do I need these? This is what happens. I like everything on Blu-ray, but I was like, do I really need these on Blu-ray? I think you can get them on eBay. I saw okay. one set for $87. There's 14 films in there. You got to figure the math. 14 films for $87. Another one was 60 something dollars. So you can get them on eBay. But I don't know if I'm going to upgrade it because then I watch them once every 20 years or something mm. like that. So that's what I'm up to. Okay. Uh, um, first first, um, first female uh, director in, in the U.S. was Louise Weber. Uh, she directed a film in 1917. Oh. Uh, and then the very first woman to direct a film was 1873. No, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Uh, a French woman directed a, the, was, was the, the actual first female director. All right. Then what's her claim uh, to fame then? Something about being a major direct, for female director. Yeah. yeah. I have to do uh, yeah, just look her research up. on that. Find out. Yeah. Uh, just watched some obscure Robert De Niro films from the 90s. One was Night in the City. The city, yeah, yeah. The, um, Mad Dog, Mad Dog and Glory oh, uh, was the that. other film. Yeah, what's the Night in the City was a remake of a film, uh, Night in the City with Richard Widmark, um, which is not bad. Uh, the the original in that case, the the original, uh, was a lot better than, um, uh, in my opinion, than than the remake with De Niro, but still an interesting film. And the Mad Dog Glory is a kind of gangsters film with with Bill Murray playing the. Uh, the the gangster to De Niro's straight guy. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, I've heard that Winnie the Pooh: Blood and Honey Two is much better mm -hmm. and getting decent reviews. I'm very surprised, but it's not hard to to, to be better than the first one because the first one was mm -hmm. real garbage. But I like what I'm hearing about the second one. I mean, the first one's bad even for a bad horror movie. It's bad, but but this uh, this sounds good. And you know, it had a three day engagement. I think it was at the theater. At the end mm. of March, and because I was sick, I didn't go. I, I would have went, but uh, I, I can. I'll catch it later. Yeah, I I, I know the movie I Monster. Um, it's got I think Peter Cushing too. Um, it's Doctor. It's Ham. It's I don't know if it's Hammer or Amicus. It's the British version of Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. They call it I Monster, and instead of being called. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, he plays a character called Dr. Mm. Marlowe or something, and Mr. Somebody, like, he changed the names. But it, it's really, it's really Jekyll and Hyde. Um, yeah, well, Bride of the Monster is, it's like I said, it's hilarious, you know. And uh, some people may have seen the movie Ed Wood, and uh, when Martin Landau plays Lugosi, and he's got all these, like, I have no home, he does the scene in there. <laughs> that, that's where that comes from, uh, you know, he's overdoing it. I mean, it's hilarious because it's so poor. Some people say that they can't get anything out of it, but I think Plan 9 from Outer Space and that movie are both entertaining for all the wrong reasons. Aha. Uh -huh. What does that mean? Uh, well, I mean, well, I mean, I guess uh, he would say is because the person is giving birth, right? This is uh, dealing with um, the, the birth of the devil. Uh, maybe the, the is what I'm thinking because it's uh, or is it or is the baby going to be a woman? Um, I, that... and plus we don't know we don't know how far back this is going before the the uh, the original uh, Omen with Gregory Peck. The first two Universal Pictures agree talking about uh, Sherlock Holmes and the Voice of Terror, and also Sherlock Holmes and the Secret Weapon. Those are two of dealing with the Nazis. Okay. Uh, and it's really scary, you know, like when I just I was talking about Voice of Terror, it's it's like terrorism, you know, the, 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 with the Nazis. It's really... By the way, back to the omen, you know, originally it was called Anti Antichrist, the working mm -hmm. title, and Charlton Heston turned it down. I always tell because I love Heston, and 
I think Gregory Peck was fantastic. I think he did a great job in it. But I could still see Heston in that role as well. And I really, oh, wish, I, I really wish yeah. he would have been a dragging a boy up to the altar at the end and stuff. I would have loved that to see Heston doing that. You, what are you thinking, man? Turning that down. Uh, I think he wanted to be in Jaws. See, now, Jaws, I wouldn't want him in there. He was going to play, mm. uh, actually, Brody. I could see him maybe doing Quint, but he was going to play Brody. And I, no, I don't think so. Too, he's too larger than life for that role. Right. Yeah, they drive by night. I remember seeing that. Uh, truck drivers with yes. George Raft and Humphrey Bogart. And I remember Ida Lupino goes insane or something. There's like some yeah. insane scene with I her or something in there. I think that was just announced for Blu-ray. Oh, good. Remind me of that. You always tend to send me things. Yeah. What was well, the, yeah, what was... I'll look it up. And... So, did you send me something that was coming? I was going to keep my mind on at the end of April. What the heck was it? Jeez, no, I can't remember. Yeah, I can look, yeah, look it Don't up. you sent me something. Anyway, uh... yes, uh, I do like that film, and yes, I do have the Criterion. Uh, I'm a big fan of the actor, Alan Dion, uh, if that's how you pronounce it, French actor. Uh, I have quite a few of his films. Uh, the Mask of Fu Manchu. Yeah, that's it. We just talked yeah. about that. Yeah, that's coming out this month, yeah. Yeah, I got I got to get that. And like yeah, I said, so Myrna Lloyd doesn't have a, doesn't have a, a huge part in it though, but she's still. I good. don't care. She's got some good scenes. She's in, in it, it for two seconds. Yeah. Uh, Peter Cushing. Yeah, I have this movie. Never watched it. <laughs> Played <laughs> Holmes in a Hammer version of the Hound of the Baskervilles. Yes. Yeah, I could see Peter Cushing as Holmes. You know. Uh, yeah, I don't think yeah. I've seen Sabotage. I've only seen have... it once, long, long time ago. Yeah, I got to catch up on some of those uh, Hitchcocks. Yeah, the Wild One. You know, I have, I have thoughts on the yeah. Wild One. Um, I, that's one of them I saw, and I thought the soundtrack. I remember the soundtrack didn't really fit, but then again, there wasn't really rock and roll then. It was more like a jazzy soundtrack, if what I remember. Mm. And I remember the soundtrack didn't fit the movie to me or the, the bikers. I thought. I think that was fifty-two, fifty-three. Yeah, it's, um, early. It's, yeah it's, an early, it's an earlier Mark Brando film. I think it's fine. You know, I don't think it's one of his better performances, but uh, it's iconic uh, in a way. I mean, the, his image uh, in that leather coat was everywhere at that time. Yes, indeed. Well, yeah. it's a genre. Yeah, it is. Well, that's because we, I make the joke because a lot of people say, Oh, I think I'm going to watch some Criterion tonight. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. you know, I don't, you know, I don't look at it that way. But that's all. Yes. Only, only a hundred. Yeah, it's hundred. And uh, we should note that um, the the passing of Louis Gossett Jr. Oh yeah. Um, you know, Louis rest, Gossett, rest in peace to him. Yeah, I came out of I came yeah. out of the theater seeing an officer and a gentleman, and I was right. so impressed with his performance. I said, this guy should get an Oscar for that. And he did. And he did. Yeah. That was one I liked, you know, I liked good, good call. Yeah. On that, you know. The one I really liked with him is with uh, Dennis Quaid, and it's called Enemy Mind. Uh, Louis oh, Carson yeah. Jr. Was, yeah, all, yeah. was all, you know, decked out in makeup. And I, I thought that was a great, like, kind of like a Rivals film where they end up becoming really good friends. I mean, I so. never saw it, but you know, it's funny because after An Officer and a Gentleman, one of the next movies that came out was Jaws 3D with Louis mm. Gossett. What a step down that was. Uh, yeah, but I bet you he was already working on that after, well, before uh, Officer and Gentleman. You know, I bet you that was already on his. Uh, he was already signed to do that. Oh, it could be that, yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, like I said, you know, uh, Plan Nine to me is just it's fun for all the wrong. It's so incompetent. Now, but see the other one that we talked about, Orgy of the Dead. That was the other one that we. Yeah. Like I thought that was a, a bore fest, even though. You oh, know, it's a bore fest, even though it's all T and A. Um. You know. Stan Laurel did a great spoof. Uh, he turns evil. He does stuff like steal candy from a baby, jumping up and down in glee. Very good. Hello, Tanner. Hey. Physical media uh, almost... pickups? You got any, Tom? Uh, no, actually, no. I mean, I, I, I this next week is is a crazy week for me. 
um, as I am flying back to Arizona to get all my stuff from a storage and driving it back here to Michigan. Um, so my, my spending has to be focused on that, <laughs> uh, and at the moment and not, uh, and not buying any, uh, Blu-rays at the moment, but, uh, hopefully the, I will get some next week. Okay. Uh, Lee Marvin was going to play Quint originally. Mm. You know, it's hard to imagine anybody with those three actors in there. You know, it's one of those movies. Right. You know. Yeah, Philip, that, you're disappointed. Because, I mean, as a horror fan, too, you know, I mean, the only things that Heston did that are horror or loosely horror was science fiction, really. The Omega Man and, um, I don't know, it's all and Green science fiction, Planet of the Apes, you know, that stuff. But he did a movie called The Awakening. That's about a mummy movie, but that's dull as dishwater, that movie. Mm hmm. You know. Well, yeah. I saw the first well, Sherlock Holmes movie in the theater and was was not that impressed, but I like Jude Law. I remember liking Jude Law as Doctor as Watson, but uh, Watson. Yeah. I, I I just I don't know. I like Robert Downey Jr. overall, but I just you get these ideas in your head sometimes what you expect Holmes to be. Mm. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, how you doing, Dusty? Good hi, to Dusty. see you, buddy. I have an answer for that. Um, the mm. thing with two heads is much more fun, I think. Yeah, uh, incredible two headed transplant, not as fun. It's incredible two headed transplant, a little more serious. I think with two heads, more like silly. Um, Who's Bucks? Oh, I hate I hate having to answer this and say I didn't see it. Easy mm. ride, a classic. Oh, uh, it's it is. Jack is you know it. I mean, Jack was just becoming Jack. I mean, he was more of a writer. Uh, he did do you know some some um, oh what's the uh, what Corman stuff, um, but that that's like could be considered like the first like Jack performance. You know, right before he did um, uh, you know. Uh, um, the five easy pieces film. Saw your first video. You were young. Yeah. Oh some, yeah. You did I a little clip on that. that. Yeah. Well, first yeah. of all, a um, couple of things. Number one, I didn't have glasses then. I, yeah. I can't see. I can't blurry as hell. Mm. Uh, I, I think the computer and doing videos are what made me mm. need glasses. Yeah. But anyway, no glasses, and this was dyed. Yes. Oh, you dyed it. Because in, in that video, when you see it dark, it's not natural. Uh, it's dyed. Right. Okay. So I don't do that anymore, but I may. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah. Um, I absolutely love Basil Rathbone in almost anything, and I love him in Son of Frankenstein. Now, some people don't like it. They think he's too over the top. I, You know, I, there's, there's some movies when I think an actor goes overboard. But in a certain movies, I can I, I can relate to it, and that's the way they acted in those years. It was filmed in 1938, Son of Frankenstein, and Rathbone was you know old actor from the stage and everything. But he's supposed to play a character that slowly goes mad as it goes on. So l later in the and and he's described later on by his wife, played by Josephine Hutchinson, as I don't know what to do with him. He he's become a bundle of uncontrollable nerves. And that's exactly how he acts. He's very, 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 like, that's exactly how he is. How do you want somebody with uncontrollable nerves to be? Well, some people don't like him in it. Some people love it. I love it. I love his performance. Ah, uh, special criterion section. Yeah, yeah. I'm not surprised. Not surprised. I had, I mean, I, I had those, a few of those in Arizona as well. Yes, I have seen Sling Blade, you know, Billy Bob's great. You know, and those, I don't, have you ever seen Sling Blade? No. Uh, the Sling Blade is one of those films, you know how when the Oscars come out and people say, well, I never heard of that movie, I never heard of that movie, I know, I didn't even know that movie existed, you know what I mean? Those are the kinds of movies that I kind of like pride myself to see, <laughs> because in no. a lot of ways... I like them better than the big popcorn summer movies. I didn't hear. Yes, I did hear. Yeah. Was it 98 years old or something like that? 
Uh, I can't picture anyone besides Richard Dreyfuss playing Hooper. Well, me either now, you know. I grew up as a kid really liking Richard Dreyfuss. Between American Graffiti and that, yeah. I just really liked him. He had a small role in, what was it, The Graduate? Yeah. I think he had a very small role in that. Very small. Yeah. I don't want me to call the cops. Should I call the cops? I'll call the cops. <laughs> he sticks his head in the door or something. Uh, 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 I didn't see the last remake of Bo Jest. Mm. Did you? No, but I'll, I mean, Ann Margaret's in there, so it can't be that bad. Yep, yep, I remember this. Mm-hmm. Okay, the old, my voice sounded higher in these old videos. Well, first of all. Oh, these, I get, Go ahead. What? No, I was saying I got a question. Finish your, but I got a question about that video. Well, first of all, I still have it here if anybody wants to buy it. $100 for the original camera that I used. First of all, I wasn't using my phone then. I was using this. And I really believe that's why it sounds different from the, from the using this. And you only had like eight minutes to record a video. Yeah, eight minutes in high def. You could do fifteen yeah. if it was not high def. Yeah, fifteen. Okay. Fifteen minutes. Yeah. yeah, I had to rush the videos most of mm -hmm. the time. Is that what you were going to ask or something? No, no. no the question was: Is do you still have the uh, the Dylan box set? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like a lot, like a lot of things. No, they do not. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, in the, the Jaws novel, the character Hooper was a tall, good-looking surfer type and had an affair mm. with Mrs. Brody. Yeah, the book is not... I don't think the book is as good as the movie. I think it's too bogged down by stuff that... You know, when you make a movie, you usually excise a lot of that stuff. I mean, there's a subplot about, and he's not likable either, Hooper. He's not particularly likable in the book. Hooper. Uh, what about White Zombie? Well, White Zombie is the first zombie movie, even though the zombie movies are nothing like they are now. Flesh-eating ghouls. It wasn't like that back then. It's more voodoo kind of thing. Sleepwalking dead people. Anyway, and it's Bela Lugosi at his best. It, you know, it's, it's great, but it is a little bit, it's a slow movie. I, I find it slow, and I like I like those early 30s movies, you know, but I do find mm -hmm. some of them slow. I, I find Dracula very slow. I find White Zombie very slow. The Mummy with Karloff I find slow. But some people try to say, well, that was just, they were just coming into sound films, and that's not true, though, because Frankenstein I find it moves. And I like also The Invisible Man. These are movies that that move more, you know. They're both, both James Whale movies, those two. What did you think of the uh, the Spanish version of, of Dracula? Did you the, watch yeah, that one? Yeah, the Spanish version of Dracula. Did you ever see it? Yeah, yeah, because it came out, because I know when I had it on DVD, um, it, it had both versions. The thing about that is, I, I think most people concur, It most fans, it's it's really better shot in a lot of ways. It has a lot of good scenery. The use of the camera work is much better. It, it, it's a better film because the one with, with Lugosi is more like it's filmed like flat, like a stage play. Mm. You can watch it a play mostly. This one really has a lot of shadow. It, it really has a good camera. The, the problem is the cast isn't as good to you know, most okay. people think. Drac Dracula is played by Carlos Valerius that a lot of people say Carlos hilarious because he's unintentionally <laughs> for makes like these faces and stuff mm. and he's like unintentionally hilarious so I don't think I don't think that the cast is as good he, but if you had that the, the Lugosi cast in the Spanish production that's what everybody said would be ideal but um yeah but I was also going to say back to, to the early horror movies another one 1931 into 32. Uh, Ruben Mamoulian's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is mm. amazingly, it still holds up today, and it's one of the most effective of those early movies, so you can't just say oh, well, you know, Dracula was slow because it was, I used to say that 
as a kid, you know, because it was 1931. No, 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 no. There's other 1931 movies that are better made. Uh, Death Proof. Let's talk about that a little bit. Um. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's the the one connected with uh, that's the uh, Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez uh, Grindhouse uh, films. And uh, it is longer Death though Proof. by itself. Yeah. Yeah. It, um. It, you know. But I, I thought that was the weaker of the the two. Um. Yeah. There's a lot of padding um, in, in in the longer version. There's a lot of padding. Yeah. I like Kurt Russell in the movie. I think yeah. who's that one? Zoe Bell, who's the stunt woman that does all that stuff at the end on the car, yeah, she's riding on the top of the hood, and everything. I, I I enjoy the movie. I just don't think it's any, it, it's not one of his best. Unfortunately, when you rank Tarantino's films, I think everybody usually has that at the bottom. Yeah, it would be near, it would be at the bottom or near the bottom. I mean, I. The only ones I haven't seen that I could really think right well, now. Well, you haven't seen The Hateful Eight. You haven't seen The Hateful Eight yet. I haven't seen yeah. The Hateful Eight. And uh, yeah. what else? I think that's it, well, you really. seen? Yeah, I think that's it. I think we talked about that before. And uh, I don't know. Jackie Brown, I like Jackie Brown. But uh, I don't know if I like it better than Death Proof. I don't know. It's probably better than Death Proof. Oh, it's ten times better than Death Proof. Yeah, every time this comes up, I say I like I I really appreciate Young Frankenstein now, but as a twelve year old, I was furious <laughs> because they just made fun of it. I'm like, what do you do, make it fun of those movies? Yeah. And it's impossible to watch Son of Frankenstein. Got a cough. Yeah, we just talked cough about. Away, buddy. Uh, I cough again. I think. Oh man, I swallowed it. Uh. It's impossible to talk about to watch Son of Frankenstein if you've seen Young Frankenstein without laughing because they have an inspector with a wooden arm in Son of Frankenstein. Everybody laughs unintentionally at him. Uh, and uh, same thing with Bride of Frankenstein. You can, It made me furious when I went to see Bride of Frankenstein, the classic, at the theater and a bunch of mystery science theater types were in there and they had the Wonderful touching scene between the, the blind hermit and the monster in the original Bride of Frankenstein. And they left their asses off because they're thinking of Gene Hackman and the monster in uh, Young Frankenstein. Right. So, but, but you know, and, and of course, I think that uh, maybe Gene Wilder's doctor is Frankenstein is probably... Right. Uh, patterned after Basil Rathbone and Son of Frankenstein also, I'm thinking. Mm. Uh, yeah, Udo Kier, yeah, I like him. Yeah, he uh, had kind of like a little resurgence with uh, with the um, Lars von Trier, uh, a few Lars von Trier films as well, but I, you know, he, he's great in Flesh of Frankenstein. Yeah, I saw that in a the movie theater too. It, it Did you? <laughs> 3D. It, was, it wasn't much 3D in it. Mm. I mean, but uh, the Death Wish movies I do like, but I want them the right way, and I don't know if you can find them all in America the right way yet. Mm. You tell me Blu-ray. I mean, I like Death Wish 2 the best. That's my favorite one. Um, I like Death Wish 5, which nobody likes, the last one. I really like that <laughs> one. 2 and 5 are my favorite ones, believe it or not. But, uh, but Death Wish 2 has a lot of cut scenes. Um, it was cut for, I think, in the theater as well, hmm. I think. And you have to get an unedited version. Ah, uh, the favorite Hitchcock movie question. There we go. <laughs> we seem to get this one a lot, but... Um, but listen, I mean, I, I tend to go with Psycho and Vertigo. Um, you know, I do like Frenzy. Um, uh but uh, Rebecca's those early ones with with uh, Cary Grant, uh, I find fun. Um, but yeah, Rebecca. Yeah, there's a lot of them. I, 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 you know, I I gotta stick with. I always stick with horror a lot of times. I like The Birds is my favorite. The Birds and Psycho are my two favorite Hitchcock movies. I like Frenzy. Those you know, I like. Um, I gotta get a shadow of a doubt. I think it is. That's the Joseph Cotton one. That's one I, I like. Uh, that one is is really good. I love this. this is a great scene where he's 
gonna get the he wants the girl uh so he picks up a flower and kind of like tears the petal off because as like he's gonna deflower her <laughs> yeah like i can't even remember that yeah. part i don't but i remember seeing it thinking this is <laughs> that this part's is, always stood out to good. me always sit and out you to know me. i like you know i like rear window i only watched yeah. uh vertigo one time and yeah. it was on a crummy vhs tape and i yeah. thought it was the most boring yeah. exercise and tedium ever him driving everywhere and what, what he's doing i don't know so and I say I haven't given it a good chance, and I, I, that's a, that's a movie I want to really see with open, open eyes yeah. and mind, I, and see it I, again. I did, I did get to see that in the theater, so that was good. Yeah, uh, and I like Rope. I saw that. Uh, that was a judge. I can't remember all. There's one of them I um, I saw Dial M for Murder, but I can't remember it mm -hmm. if I liked it or not. Rope was done better as a movie called Compulsion with uh, Orson Welles and Dean Stockwell. I like that version of that story the best. Yeah, yeah Joe, uh, Joe, Joe Flattery, Flattery. We forgot to mention him. Yeah. I think he was also on Saturday Night Live, or because I know he was part of Second City in Chicago with Belushi. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, SCTV was was pretty damn good. Pretty pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, yep, exactly, Blood Vessel. I expect to see you there, Blood Vessel. And I expect yeah. to see Danny there, too, 50% off. <laughs> uh, you should do a reunion video with that camera one last time as a goodbye. In fact, this has come up every once in a while, too. Well, I'll tell you what, if if you do end up selling that camera... Then maybe do do the one more with it, saying goodbye to the camera. <laughs> um, well, I definitely yeah. wouldn't seriously expect yeah. to sell it. But uh, again, it's the same thing with Son of Dracula. Uh, uh, we got a copy, a friend of mine and I. Crappy yeah. co quality, really hard to watch, and I, it was pretty bad. But the quality was bad, and I just remember I liked. Uh, there was one song that I really liked in it, and I still don't remember what song that was. Hmm. So I, I, I'm up for another... Uh, yeah, I need to see yeah. that and Blind Man. Those are the two I need to see. Yeah, Blind Man. Blind Man is worth seeing because of Ringo being a, a, a son of a bee in there. It's amazing seeing him in that part like that. Uh, how do you find getting rid of stuff? Uh, you want to go first? Uh, well, I, I'm to the... Uh, I want to keep it as short as I can, but right now I'm yeah. going to a point that I... Didn't know if I'll ever get there because, you know, when you start getting older, I didn't want to be that guy that says I'm starting to reach a point where I'm thinking I got to get rid of a lot of stuff, extraneous yeah. stuff. And I got in there. So um, right now uh, I'm getting rid of stuff, but I'm still bringing other yeah. stuff in. <laughs> when when Blu-ray started becoming more mainstream, I got rid of every single I mean, 99.9 percent .9 of my DVD collection I got rid of, which was over 2000 movies. And I was kind of, in a way, regretting that a little bit because there's stuff that still hasn't come out on Blu-ray that I had on DVD that I really miss. Mm -hmm. and most of what I'm talking about is vinyl, really. Mostly, yeah. not so much movies. But if I happen to see a movie like I, like The Passion of the Christ, for example, I saw it in the movie theater. I, mm -hmm. I liked it. I saw it once or twice on home video, and I'm like... The last time I was like, I don't think I need to see this anymore. It just, that happens mm -hmm. to me sometimes. With some well, that things. happened to me with the uh, all the with the Marvel movies. I mean, at the point I was yeah. like, okay, I'm done, and then I just got rid of all of them, all of the Marvel movies. Stop playing with yourself, Hooper. <laughs> uh, a lady from the original cast, of Star Trek. Mm. I don't know. Anybody recently? What about Burt Reynolds? I love him in uh, Deliverance. Is Deliverance a movie the movie you haven't seen? I've seen Deliverance. Oh, who's the one that hasn't seen it? Somebody's afraid to see it. I said you got to see it. I don't know who it was. But uh, Burt's hit or miss. Burt's hit or miss with me. I mean, he's done some really bad stuff. I mean, the special love. There's like, quite a few movies in the '80s where it just they were just terrible. Just terrible, unfortunately. I mean, I, I like... Uh, oh, God. Smokey and the Bandit. I still recommend his last movie, if nobody's seen it. 
and it has a different. It has a couple of different titles. I would recommend mm-hmm. that for you too, Tom, if you haven't seen it. I think right. it was originally called The Last Movie Star, but I think it's got another title now that it goes by. Yeah, I looked it up. I looked it, it up. It's a good story, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, th- I liked it. Um, and I never saw Skullduggery. That's a movie that I've never seen that he's in. Mm-hmm. But I think definitely Deliverance, is, for what I've seen, is his best movie. Sharky's Machine. Yeah. Was all right. Yeah, so Sharky's that... Machine is pretty good. And I, I know... I know uh, the babe loves uh, Liza Minnelli, but I swear that movie Rent a Cop was just, to me, god awful. Yep, yep. I know. I know the scene. I know that movie like the back of my hand. Yep. Wait a minute. I, I, never, I never saw that before. Oh. Uh... You saying the baby again? I'm not going to wow, tell you God, until you God. say say what his name is. He's yeah. not the baby. So funny. It's so spanky. funny thing. What? Yeah, Spanky. So funny thing. While I'm watching, um, it's a wonderful life. I completely forgot the character, the actor that played Alfalfa. Alfalfa uh, yeah. is in it for has a bit part. All right, here goes. This is from Birthday Blues. Wow. <laughs> He's eating hot sauce on his sausage. Uh, there you go. We see if Henry's in authority on that. He knows. Uh, and I was hoping that uh, I'm going to always give you publicity, Mike. This this guy's got to be watched. Gray 1951 Media Channel, Mike. Got a great channel. And uh, he likes well, he likes old classic movies like I do. So uh, just saw Clara Bow in It, my silent film class tonight. She's gorgeous. Wow. Yeah, nice. who's the most gorgeous silent star? That's another question. Lillian Gish. Breakdown. Did I ever see Breakdown? Breakdown is an okay little Kurt Russell film. I don't think it's anything spectacular or anything. Deathstalker is a sword and sandal film from the 80s. Uh, actually, there's there's multiple uh, sequels to it that are really bad. And Deathstalker's bad, but it's a great little sword and sandal TNA film. Okay, I can understand that. But this is like a raw, stripped-down uh, role um, for De Niro in there. I, I got to disagree with you, but I can understand why you would say that. Uh, I I I I'm not familiar with them, with those films. I should be. Mm. Sergio Leone films. Yeah, yeah, the the three, the spaghetti western. Oh, I went down the wrong way. Or a few I went down the wrong way. Uh oh, uh oh. For a few dollars more, fistful of dollars, and the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh. Oh yeah, she was. Oh yeah. And once you get to the episode of the Art Couple when they ha- when Felix is afraid of flying, uh, you'll see Terry Gar as a stewardess, not a stewardess, a receptionist, uh, receptionist, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Well, the first fifteen twenty minutes of Dracula is really good. Um, there's a scene later in the, a couple of scenes later that I do like a lot. One of them is when Dracula furiously smashes the box with the mirror in it when he's found out. And another one is this confrontation with Van Helsing. The two of them in the living room. Oh, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein all the way for me. But really? I'm, par- I'm partial. As far as for uh, no. laughs, I'm not talking about for laughs. Yeah. yeah. For, for laughs, I pick Young Frankenstein for monster action. <laughs> I don't know. I put okay. The other. Yes, I'm a huge fan of Locke. Uh, I like Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy's done some fan fun stuff. Uh, so yes, I do like Locke a lot. Least favorite to most favorite. Kill Bill all the way down there? No way. Wow. 
Yeah. I don't yeah. know. It's funny because I uh, there was a time when I was putting Kill Bill number one, and I'm talking about Kill Bill the whole thing, one and two yeah. together as one thing. Um, Looks like that's what he did, too. But yeah. I might have to put Pulp number one. You know, when we get Mask of the uh, we get Mask uh, Mask of Fu Manchu, we should review it here. Yeah, let's do that. That's a good yeah. thing. That's something that we could both yeah. do at the same time. Yeah, I would be into yeah. that. I haven't seen yeah. it in a long time. I can, I can retire my regular DVD of it. Okay. I have it in a box set with some other things. That's uh, boots. That's not that sound <laughs> like my uh, my topic. It's uh, a sub submarine film, and I tell you what. You could cut the tension with a knife in that film. There's so many tense scenes in that movie. I'm sweating my ass off watching that movie. It's so tense. Okay, here we go. Umbrella. It's region free. Oh, there uh, you go. That's well, uh, Australia, though. It's it, it, I think it's an Australian product. Okay. If I can get it easy enough, I would. Yeah. I would like to get it. Those all should be available right in right in the U.S. I don't. A death game, I forget what that is. Do you know what that is? Mm, uh, it's, it's movies with similar titles. Yeah, I'll have to look that up. I forgot right now. I don't know which one Rambo 5 is. I don't I don't know. Uh, you know, I get them mixed up. The last I one. The, I, I think First Blood is go, is great, the first one. What is it? Um, I don't rem I, I have the other ones. I don't remember them being much. But I do like the one that where he came back. I think it was just called Rambo. Mm. I was very surprised that that I thought that was really good when he came back. Uh, oh, come on! Look, look, don't start me here. I'm gonna be started. I know you'll love De Niro the two of you guys. He ain't that versatile. I'm sorry. Oh, please. You know, I'm sorry. Please. He's the definition of versatile. No, not him. Not him. Oh, you know, yes, he is. No. A little know. bit. A little bit. No, no, no. Yeah. He's versatile in uh, King of Comedy. I'll give you that. It's that mustache, I tell you. <laughs> uh, you got me here. Yeah. Uh. Well, you know what? It's... <laughs> Uh, depends on uh, on your you know if you're open minded or not. I mean, there's some horrific scenes in, in Lars von Trier's Breaking the Waves. I'll tell you what, watch Breaking the Waves. If you like that, then then start digging into uh, more Lars von Trier. North by Northwest. I tried to watch the whole thing once, and I'm not mm -hmm. ashamed to admit it. Sometimes I get lost. I mean, I did, mm -hmm. couldn't follow it too well. And the trouble with Harry, I've never seen. Yeah, I, I, I never saw the, I never saw the movie. Uh, you know, I've seen, yeah. I've, I know I saw it's, it on TV, bits of it, but not the whole thing. Right. It's, it's not the best. I mean, Deer Hunter is the, is the best film with, you know, De Niro, and Meryl Streep, but you know, Harvey Keitel's got a smaller, small part in there too. But it, it's, it's by far their, their best movie or performance. And there's Jill checking in. I gotta say though, you know, it's. I still don't understand how, how it works when people come up with co like comments after we've talked about something a long time. I don't know how that works with the viewing. It's behind, they're behind, kind of. Mm. Uh, no, I, I can't say I've seen Scum. Oh, I was going to ask you, because it's coming out this month on Arrow. I mean, have you seen um, uh, Basket Case? I never did, but it's funny. Just today I saw some scene uh, popped up on Facebook or someplace. And it was mm. horrifying. Something yeah, came jumping yeah. out of a basket and biting yeah. a woman. I was like, "That's horrifying." Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that made me want to see it. I don't know how I missed that one, but uh... and then uh, Jill is talking about Shadow of a Doubt. Yep. Which uh, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, there's some, you know, kind of like um, what's the film with uh, the Mar Martin Scorsese film um, uh, with the Christ? Um, you know, I got so many actors, New York actors in that Last film. Last Temptation. Yeah, Last Temptation of Christ. Thank you. Um, you got so many New York actors in that film, you know, and it's it's just painful to watch it. 
that way, knowing that these guys got these thick New York accents and they're trying to do this. Yeah, you know? I, got for that. I think I tried to watch <laughs> that once. Yeah. Uh, Son of Dracula is terrible. I was oh, about there that you a go. long time ago. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how that works. Um, yes, indeed. I know this is true. Yes. Jimmy Page wrote the, the music in Death Wish 2. So, so I've heard it go in a theater. looks great throughout. But I thought it was seemed a bit exaggerated. It was exaggerated Stewart's character's yeah. obsession with the woman he lost. Yeah. Well, that's I mean that's I mean the obsession is part of the film. You know that's what drives the film is his obsession with the with the woman. I've never seen Candy. Yeah, I've seen Candy. Yeah. He's seen everything. This guy. Well, you know everything. Randall's in it. <laughs> yeah, Brando's in it, Mathau's in it, you know, I mean, it's, it's garbage, it's, and, it's a, and it's a sex comedy. I mean, who doesn't like sex comedy? Who doesn't yeah, it's like, garbage, you know, from what I've heard. Who doesn't want to see young women naked, you know? <laughs> well, well, I'll give you that. <laughs> uh, wait a minute, I got early Frank and Dracula on Blu-ray, but it's only 4.3. The standard DVD fills the screen. I like it. You should never fill the screen. No good filling the screen. You think you're getting more, you're getting less. That's rule one, rule one about anybody who prefers a 4.3 stretched out. Favorite midnight movie? Well, I don't know what that means exactly. Night of the Living Dead? I don't know. Anything like that. Anything that's like a horror film? I don't know. Midnight movie? Mm. Or kind of like uh, what's the, uh, with the musical with... Um... What's his name in it? Uh, you know what I'm talking about. No, I do not wonder what you're talking about. Yeah, you do. What? With Tim Cur with Tim Curry. What? Um eh. oh, well. <laughs> Yes, uh, the song with the Jump in the Fire uh was Nelson. I don't know, but you're saying from Son of Dracula, maybe? Uh the one I the song I liked that I don't know what it is. Uh, I... the musical was Susan Sarandon and Tim Curry. Horror Rocky Horror Picture Show. Thank you, Doc. Thank oh, there you. you go. Yeah, that's a midnight movie. Doc, I don't see no doc. Am I the only one here that was never a big Will Smith fan? No, I'm talking no. about before he even slapped Chris Rock. I never liked him much. I uh, need the same here. You know, I just don't. I don't like the guy. Uh, before he did that, I don't like it. I th I did think that he was serviceable in I Am Legend, but uh, you know, I I, I don't really care for him. I thought the the uh, the CGI creatures or whatever you want to call them were terrible. Oh, so do I. I ruined, and there's no need for that. That's exactly what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. You really need to do that. You can't put people. In, you can't like make people up or something. Or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah. Well, I agree with you on this, and it's a, sh a shock to me that he's in such good shape. Um, I've seen him lately on some TV programs, and he yeah, he's got a documentary. Bad. <laughs> yeah, he's got a documentary documentary out right now about his uh, career. Uh, you know what? I like I like Malcolm McDowell in the films. I know I, Joe. I don't think you do. I hate um, him. Yeah. Well, not him. The, but, the way it was written. Yeah. Yeah, but all in all, I don't think they were any better or worse than. I'm not the biggest Halloween fan. I I own the Hall I own the original. Watch it, but I think it's a boring film. Hmm. I thought I thought the with Rob Zombie Halloween two sucked, and I thought that uh, the only other thing I remember liking about Halloween two is that uh, the Z Rob Zombie version is that uh, Michael Myers character was really good and brutal, uh, and the first one I liked the first half, and then when it turned into a, the second half turned into a uh, rip off of the first movie. I'm like, you know, but if you're gonna try to do something different. Why don't you call it something else? Just make another movie about a serial, serial killer kid that starts out with... You're not supposed to know right. who he is in Halloween. It's supposed to be a mystery as to what, as to what, who he is and what he does, why he does what he does. You know, he's explaining he first tortures animals. and he does. He's a kid, mixed up kid. It's like, you know, get out, get lost. But anyway, I know why. Because they want the box office. Mm -hmm. That's why. Cannibal Run. Exactly. 
uh, cop and a half. Uh, I remember that title, but I don't know if that's what you're saying. Uh, no, I've heard about this. So, who, you mentioned it last time, too, or something like that. I don't have any disc rod on me that I know of yet. Mm -mm. Nope. You know. And Doc's t Michelle Nichols has been gone a couple of years. So it wasn't her. Yep. I Had remember her on my desk, on my desk, the Deadpool that year. No, you don't do that, do you? Oh yeah, I do celebrity. Oh, Deadpool, that's disgusting. Yeah. You would be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> this, and you won't buy bootleg records. Ugh. I'm changing. I'm going to change my ways on that. We just Andy and I just did an oh, episode really? earlier just tonight, and I'm going to be changing my. Well, it's ways a little on late for that. I think now yeah. everything comes out <laughs> pretty much, yeah. but. Um. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I have no need for VHS. I, I, I still have some. Why? I don't know. Maybe for sentimental. It's funny. Reasons. Yeah, because um, my stepdad, I, when, I, when, when DVD came out, then I got rid of all my VHSs. And my stepdad, he bought a bunch of them. And, I, and they're still all down here, <laughs> here. So it's pretty funny. But I can't watch them because I don't have a working VHS player. Enemy of the State with Will Smith and Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Son of Dracula, I've seen some parts. I much prefer the one with Lon Chaney Jr. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, me too. Mm. Uh, all right. Uh, oh, we did this already. How did, how did, how, yeah, you did that one. Wait a minute. How did, what happened? I might go back to the same thing. The lady who died from Star Trek was in the episode where she played the bride wedding on the Enterprise. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. I don't. I'm not that familiar enough with Star Trek. Well, Braveheart. Listen, not interested. Yeah. Listen, another film like Shawshank Redemption. You have to see again. Another one that did nothing at the box office. Shawshank Redemption. Braveheart. They totally bombed at the box office, and they became cable classics. And uh, those films, both of those films, Shawshank and Braveheart, I think, are terrific. I'm on an organization and cataloging kick with my vinyl CDs and movies, not to mention music. Oh, cool. Yeah. Purging. See, it all ha it happens to all of us yeah. at some point, and it will happen to you, Tom Hanyati. I per I listen. I've purged stuff. I just told you I purged all my DVDs when Blu-rays came out. When when DVDs came out, I purged all my VHSs. <laughs> uh, intelligent depth always catches my eye in any film. I mean, Silent Women, man, man, it's tough for me. <laughs> but they had so much makeup on. Yeah, though. that's you what know, it is. Mm. I know you love horror. Saw films and stuff, but I just want to let you know if you watch Seven, I firmly believe will become one of your favorite films. Well, I've heard a lot of good things about it, that's for sure. Seven is another one of those, oh my god, there's a few moments in there, and you're watching, you know, sweating, <laughs> you know, you're like, what's gonna happen? Oh my god. Yeah. Um, I heard good stuff. Damn it, I was just it. gonna ask you a question, I totally lost it now. I nah, see, I'm glad see, that's, I'm glad that, uh, Glad you took a chance and uh, an order to love from a stranger, but from where? From oh, Sinister Cinema. Okay, yeah, I think it's the same print. I think it's the same print. I think there's only one rough sixteen millimeter print. It's it. You can you can you can watch it. It's just uh, it's a shame. I, mean, I did a little review on that. I love that movie, and I really wish somebody could find a good copy that have some kind of interest. One of those boutique labels. You know, it was something like uh, Shout Factory or something. Because Rathbone is amazing in there, going from a suave, debonair lady man, ladies' man to a deranged psychopath, serial killer. It's it's great. Um, okay, just reading a few comments here. Just realized I've never seen... Uh, Wow. Any Tarantino films. Well, you should uh maybe watch uh one this this uh this week and 
and let us know what you thought of it next week when we do. Well, hold, yeah, I think do we'll Pulp Fiction do first. I, th- I think. Like, yeah. You know, I think. But other people may disagree, but I think that's a good place to start. Yep. Well, that's probably. I don't know what my favorite. You know, actually, I'm trying to really think. I haven't seen enough of uh, the great ones. Um, well, you still haven't watched that Taxi Driver. No, no. I, well, I saw it once. I just haven't seen it. Oh, you did see it once. Okay. Oh, yeah, I've seen it, and I need another view of it because, it was again, it was a crappy old VHS tape in bad shape. No, i got to see the Blu-ray. But I do like King of Comedy a lot. Mm. And I, I like Meet the Pirates, too. I've got to be honest with you. I wonder if Pacino could do something like Meet the Parents. I don't know. Maybe. Not anymore. But uh... Oh, man. Well, he sees it. looks rough. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's what happens when you have a, you know, him and him and the other guy, you know, having kids at 79, 80 years old. <laughs> I don't understand either. As to me, it seems like you guys are behind. What? <laughs> What is that with that? What, what's the phenomenon of that? We're behind on the comments is what she's saying, I think. Oh, well, yeah, well, we are, but maybe that's what it is. Anyway, you got to do with a lot of questions. I'm just bouncing ahead. Oh, this is great. I think I think we're, I mean, the last couple of weeks, been, we've been getting a lot of good stuff. It's up there. Raging Bull, I think, is... Uh, up until Daniel Day Lewis's uh, performance in "There Will Be Blood," um, I, I think he has replaced De Niro's best performance in 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 *Raging Bull*. But um, but those are, those two performances, I think, were two of the greatest in, in the history of of uh, films. Yeah. So this is Lars von Trier. This is the last film that uh, that he directed, the house that Jack built with um, with Matt Dillon. Oh, I don't know. Offhand, I can't think of who's a. Oh, how about does Mel Gibson count? He's Australian. I didn't know for years that he wasn't yeah. like a New York guy. Yeah. After, yeah. Uh, Christian Bale, I think, uh, might be, might be in that uh, discussion. And this guy again, one of Henry's. I, I put Henry back on. Gary Oldman. He's always got to mention Gary Oldman. He's great. Gary Oldman is great. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. I don't know what's going on. All right, all right. Let's not fight about it. <laughs> Tom knows his movies. Fact. So, what do you think of this series, buddy? <laughs> I'm telling well, listen, you. Listen, I, I, the what I like about this, Joe, you and I doing this is because we have like our like like the, we have like our like our our uh, trunk, right, or whatever tree. But then we go off on different branches. Oh, this goes, then, this, this goes you everywhere. Know, you know, like, I would not, like, just talking with you, you know, like with um, the 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 Joe Spinell film uh, that we we're talking about, Maniac, right? I would have never given that movie a thought, a time of day to think about, but until we started doing these, yeah. you know, movie chats. You yeah, know, that's... Mask of Fu Manchu, I mean, I, I wouldn't, probably wouldn't have considered it, uh, you know, until we were doing these chats. So, so you know, hopefully, you, you know, you'll watch a few things that I maybe talk about as well too, you know, but uh did you see Ben? That's a good yesterday? question. Did you did you, Joe? I don't know oh, if you yeah, talked about uh, that yeah, yet. Uh, yeah, I, I at the beginning I was talking about it. Yep. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Uh <laughs> you're way off with the comments. What the hell you want me to tell you? You try doing this. That's another thing I really love with people. You try doing this. Oh you critics. Well, when you have two people also commenting on, on you know, on comments, okay, sometimes it, it takes a hot minute. Sometimes it takes a hot minute. I have no interest in seeing Lincoln. Sorry. I know he that probably has. He won his third Oscar for that. All right. Joe is doing his coughing thing. I probably would watch Henry Fonda's Lincoln. Also. Oh, not, what was the other guy? Raymond Massey before I watched yeah. Daniel Day-Lewis. Henry Fonda doing the Young Lincoln. Is that that ridiculous movie my girlfriend likes? No, no, no. What's the one she likes? Oh, that's the one. Somewhere in Time is the one with Superman, um, Christopher Reeves. That's right? ridiculous. The one when he, yeah. You know, again, we talked about suspension of disbelief in movies. 
yeah, yeah. You lay down there and you talk, oh, I'm going to go back in time, I'm going to go back, and you actually physically go back in time. I'm going to get a butcher cover tonight then, if that's the case. You know, come on. There's got to be a better reason for him to go back in time than he just tries to <laughs> hypnotize uh... himself. Uh... And it doesn't help that is anything that everybody just like talks to each other and makes like remarks that don't have anything to do with this. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, here we go. Another question from Henry. Listen, Henry. Assume that I've seen everything Scorsese done, as Brando has done, Pacino, De Niro's. I just, just assume I've seen all of that stuff. Okay. Because I have. I've uh, never seen the man who haunted himself. No. I haven't seen many Roger Moore films outside of the uh, what he's done with Bond. Yeah, me either. Uh, Lost in Space 1998 is a sacrilegious disgrace. It is one of the worst reboots of anything. Um, then that was the one with uh, Gary Oldman, right? Yes. Yeah. And Miss Crabtree was hot, I think, in The Little Rascals, but that's the 30s. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, there you go. We talk about this, too, with Henry all the time, Henry. You, you know, this is why you have the same questions and the same movies and the same actors all the time. Which is the best it's... one, Kate Fear? We can talk about De Niro all the time. It's a loose horror it's not film. A, it's, not, it's not a horror film. But yeah, it's, it's not, not but it could loosely be, but I don't think it's a horror it's film. Suspenseful. It's a suspenseful film. Oh, God, help me. What is worse? Oh, come on. The Neither. Probably Deer Hunter. No, no. Uh, Both are excellent. Both are excellent. No, films. don't see Reservoir Dogs first. That, that, that's... I watch them in a chronological order. Nah. Why not? Nah, go for the one that's considered his masterpiece, Pulp Fiction. Then see the other uh, ones. If you don't like Reservoir Dogs that much, you'll never get to Pulp Fiction. In my opinion. You're going to be okay. I didn't mm. see Jack and Jill. Oh, did I, yeah, did, I, yeah. I, I, think I, did I talk about that Panic in Needle Park at all? Yeah, yeah, you did. The drug movie? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I, you yeah, know. it's a depressing little movie, you know. I mean, it's it's kind of cool to watch, you know, as you know, an early film for Pacino. Who'll stop the rain? Nineteen seventy-eight. Okay. Well, go out and get it. No, seriously, I shouldn't say it. this. Is Mike I'm talking to? I was being yeah. funny with my sarcastic answer, but no. Who'll stop the rain? <laughs> Who'll stop the rain? Uh, Night of the Hunter. It is a great film. Yeah, Robert Mitchum is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Maniac, a great film. Disgusting, but he plays a disgusting guy so well. Joe Spinell. Yes, I agree. It's a classic of its type. All right. And uh, what's his name with the with the special effects and the makeup? Um, Savini. Tom yes, Savini. thank you. Tom, Tom Savini. Great yeah, Very good in effects him. in that. Yeah. Uh, Carnival of Souls, <laughs> yawn. We get this one a lot, too. But, uh, yeah, yeah. But again, I'm also willing for another. Maybe my mind wasn't right with that. You know, I, I'm all for like suggestive movies and dream like, dream like movies and things like right. that. But mm. I remember being bored with it. Yeah. Yes, I I do have I do own that movie, Get Carter, 1971. I do not like the Sylvester Stallone remake of of Get Carter, but uh, that Michael Caine, I I like that. It's one of my favorite Michael Caine performances. Hello, Kimba. What's going on, Kimba? Kimba, have you been to Big Lots lately? Getting any more movie finds? That red lipstick. I gotta be quiet now. Um. Yes. Yes. Uh, one of the great lines. Uh, let's not start sucking yeah, each other's yeah, butts in that movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I'm afraid. I'm afraid that I uh, missed that Gong Show movie. Mm. Do, 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 do. Um, if you had to choose only films you watch or films you've never seen in a desert island, oh, you know my answer. Come on, I'm out. I bring all my favorite films of all time and just watch them endlessly. Yeah. No, no, no problem with that. You know, for me, that is. 
<laughs> yeah, it's dirty, all right. I just have no, I just can't have any sympathy for these people. Yep. Oh boy, let's remake Night of the Hunter. Yo, let's do that. Oh, I mean, it's an interesting thing that could get that that can be taken to even farther levels today. With you know, yeah, with the looseness yeah. of now of the MPAA, you know, ratings board, you know, you can take things a little farther now. You That's know? not necessarily a good thing, though. Sometimes. No, no. Sometimes less is more. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yes. um, that's a movie yeah. I'm going to see. What do you think of that? But uh, I, yep, I saw yep, the trailer. It, 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 the trailer looks all right, but I still don't like them. It looked too much like apes, but at least I mean like real apes instead of like evolved apes. Mm. But whatever, you know, I, my heart is with the original series. Although I do like, mm. I do like the new series somewhat. I'm glad okay. they're doing something. Yes, I did see this movie, and I own this movie. Yes, yes. it was yep. pretty good. It's a good uh, early Bogart performance, and Betty Davis is great as always. Yeah, they're good. Everybody's good in there. Uh, <laughs> not me. I didn't have any sandwich today. I did today. I I did today. I did. I did. Yeah. No big lots recently. Interesting. Michael Caine wrote a mystery book. <laughs> yeah, I don't like lipstick unless it's pale. As, as she taunts it. I don't like lipstick. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, well, that, well, that's the, th the thing, too, you know. I mean, I was thinking of this movie. I was thinking of Cape Fear when mm. we were talking about remaking Night of the Hunter, you know, because the Scorsese, yeah. uh, Cape Fear is good, as, as is the right. original. So sometimes you can, sometimes you can have two alongside yeah. each other. Sometimes, very rarely do, does the redo reboot like uh, replace the original. Right, right. I was but, uh, 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 watching something or reading something about how Harrison Ford was asked to do the Nick Nolte uh, role, um, but he wanted the he wanted the De Niro role, but he was already signed on to do it. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, Petrified Forest. I haven't seen it in a long. It was in the Warner Brothers mm. Gangster Collection, I think, Gangsters Collection that I got. Yeah. And I, I'm sure I saw the Groove Tube. But I just can't remember. That's like Kentucky Fried Movie. It's like bizarre. I don't remember it though. You know, some of these you saw 30, 40 years ago. Um, uh, the story with, with my Suspiria story. I do like yeah. Suspiria. I think it's a good, a good horror movie. Um, yeah, I will eventually get it, and I will eventually watch it. I just got to work myself up to to see it. Yeah, just that you know, I wish I could see it without my superstitions. Because mm. you know, I, you know, I, remember my story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does everybody know my story? Not everybody knows it, right? <laughs> I watched it on September the night of September the tenth, two thousand one, and the next day the towers came down. It was nine eleven. And I made some kind of weird mental connection that if I see Suspiria again, something majorly tragic will happen. My, you know, my life or in the world or something. Right. So, uh, so since 2001, I've, I've I've been afraid to watch Suspiria, and there's no rhyme or reasoning behind it. Just mm -hmm. that it was the movie that I, not because it's a horror movie. It I, it could it could have been uh, a comedy. It could have been anything. Mm -hmm. Just that's the last movie I watched the night before. So some people uh, blame Slay the band Slayer for the uh, for that because they released an album called God Hates Us All on that day. Oh, one never knows. Yeah, <laughs> that was a good line, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's a classic. I uh, wish I saw that. At, I wish I saw that when it happened. I hope that wasn't one that was mm -hmm. deleted. Uh no, my girlfriend always wants me to see Dead Calm, but I I never saw it yet. We have to wrap this up. Nicole, yeah, Nicole Kidman. That's not a bad little uh little thriller. Yeah. Every time this comes up, I've never seen The Jerk. I like the man with two brains. I like the lonely <laughs> guy. 
I, 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 I like the all guy who wore movies. plaid. The plaid uh, movie. Good guys yeah. don't wear plaid. Mm, plaid. Dead guys don't yeah. wear. They meant whatever yeah, plaid. Up, yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, but I never saw the jerk. You know. Yeah. I know I'm supposed to. Uh, let me wrap this up. I got to wrap this up. I the founder's fantastic. Uh, this is guy is he wasn't actually like the founder of McDonald's, but he helped turn McDonald's into the franchise as it is today. This will be the last question. Uh, no. Hmm. Yeah, well, chick flicks are uh, sometimes. Uh, I guess it just depends on who's in the movie for me to watch a chick flick. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. That was pretty good. Another yeah, good, good show. Job. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Yeah. And we'll hopefully be here next week if we can. Um, yep. And, you know, this is open, by the way, if anybody you know, if wants to come up here that knows has something to say about movies. Um, you know, just, and I still put the invitation out there to Mike. I know I put you on the spot, Gray1951. But uh, Yeah, you should join us one night. You know, or we can just find a, you know, yeah. maybe you feel like, well, you can't answer everything. We don't know every movie, neither do I. But um, we'll just have a topic one day or something. Yeah. All right, yeah, folks. I would love that. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're going to try to do Mask of Fu Manchu when that, uh, yeah. when we see that. All right, everybody. So talk to you soon and take care. See ya. <laughs>